All right. So, a couple of things that I noticed. It was very dark in the perimeter. I turned the lights on. Um, also, there was a really annoying high-pitched squeal. I think it's coming from the projector. So I tried moving the camera back, slightly changing the angle. Hopefully it goes a little bit better. Um, I'm guessing that the memory that's on that thing, on that part, is about 20 minutes of video. So I will try to um, do this for about 20 minutes, and I'll pause. I'll give you another one. Um, wish I had something a little better to do, but uh, and you live and you learn. I'm trying to get most of this done today. Where we left off, we were talking about the different variables for position A, for a spring that uh, has a mass on it and is oscillating up and down. This is when the spring is all the way up at the top. The spring has been compressed a little bit. We said the restoring force was a negative and a maximum. It's negative because the force is going to push the, block, the mass back down. So that's where the negative comes from. It's at a maximum because this is the most compressed the spring is going to get. Okay. So that is position A. Most of that was on the first video. We can do the same thing for B and C, and we'll notice that there are certain patterns that are followed. Okay, so I'm going to write down the same variables. Uh, y, V, A, K, U, S, U, G, and F. And please note that this is not how these questions are going to be asked. We are doing this so that we can cover this stuff right now. The AP is not going to list out everything in exactly this order. Okay, they're going to ask you one or two of these. All right, this is not some like a type of question that you are going to see. This is not like a carbon copy of what you get on a multiple choice. This is me trying to explain the content to you so that you can then go and apply it when you get one of these questions. So, let's go to point B. At point B, you know, we'll say A comes first, then we go to point B. Uh, I wouldn't really describe Y as anything special. Uh, we know that it's decreasing. I guess if I was going from C up to B and then to A, we would say it's increasing. Regardless, what's happening is it's changing, okay? And let's just stick with convention. We start at A, go down to B. Y, the, the height or the Y position is simply decreasing, okay? This is the equilibrium spot again. This is where the spring is at its equilibrium length. Well, if it's at equilibrium, then that means that at this point, the speed must be at a maximum, okay? The spring is at its equilibrium right now. The spring is not stretched out. This is where the speed, well, it's negative because the block's moving down, and it is at a maximum right here, okay? The speed is at a maximum. Likewise, if this is the equilibrium length where the spring is not moving, okay, where the, or not, not not moving, that's not what I mean, where the spring is at its normal length, there can't be any restoring force. The spring is not stretched out at all. So the restoring force is zero, and if the force is zero, well, guess what? That also means that the acceleration is zero, okay? There can't be a force on this at this point. It's at equilibrium. The acceleration is also zero here, okay? Um, let's see, if the speed is at a maximum, well, that means that the kinetic energy is also at a maximum. The potential energy stored in the spring, the elastic potential energy, well, that's got to be zero, since the spring is not stretched out at all, it's at its equilibrium length. And finally, gravitational potential energy, well, the height is decreasing, so we're going to say that this is decreasing as well. Okay, it's not at zero, but it is decreasing. Okay, so let's see, the height is decreasing, the speed is negative and at a maximum, the acceleration is zero, kinetic energy is at a maximum, elastic potential energy is zero, gravitational potential energy is decreasing, the force, the restoring force is also zero. I kind of squeezed myself into a corner here, but now let's talk about point C. Okay, so I'm, apologize for the small writing, Y, V, A, K, U, S. F. This is the lowest point that the block reaches before it starts to turn around and go back up. Okay, this is the lowest point that it reaches, so we might as well say that the height or the Y position is zero. It's the lowest it reaches. If this was the maximum, why don't we just make everything easy for ourselves? We'll call that zero. Okay? 
If this is the lowest point, it is not going down any farther, but it has not yet turned or it is in the process of turning around. It has not started moving back up yet. So the speed must also be zero. The velocity at this point is zero. It is at its turning point. Okay? Well, if it, the speed is zero, we know it's about to start moving back up, and we know this is the farthest that the spring is stretched out in this direction. So that means that the spring force must be really big. And if the spring force is really big, well, that means the acceleration must also be really big. And in this time, the acceleration points up. So if the acceleration points up, it is positive, and the acceleration is at a positive maximum. Okay? This is where the mass is accelerating up the most at this point, at the lowest point right here. The kinetic energy, since the speed is zero, this must be zero. The elastic potential energy, well, this is the most that it's stretched out, so this is at a maximum. Okay? Or you could just, at the very least, think of it as uh, it's very, very high here. I'm, well, actually, I, I'm 100% sure that this is where it's at a maximum. Like I said, the other one here, there's some issues in my head that I think about that are kind of, it gives me a little bit of caution, but um, this I know for a fact. The elastic potential energy at this lowest point is at a maximum. Well, the height is zero, so the gravitational potential energy must be zero as well. The acceleration is positive and at a maximum. That means that the restoring force, the force to bring this back to equilibrium, must also be in the positive direction and at a maximum. Okay. We can do this with every single point on here. We can do this with every single, uh, well, with each of these points. Okay. We can classify these characteristics. Okay. It's pretty simple. Um, not, none of this is stuff that you haven't done so far. Okay. If I gave you this question, probably half of you would get it right. You know, questions about this, probably half of you would get it right. And probably more than half with a little bit of discussion. Okay. This isn't something that you haven't. This is. Something that you have learned before, but we're just going over it again because there are a lot of questions like this that involve springs moving in some direction. Uh, let's move on to horizontal springs now. Okay, so let me draw these. We're going to have, again, three different pictures here. Here's our first. Okay, so here's point A, oh, and again, we're going to say that there's no damping here. Um, so there's point A, here is B, with the spring a little bit more stretched out, okay? We'll say that this is the equilibrium length. And then finally, we're going to talk about point C. where it is as stretched out as it's going to be. And again, we are transitioning between all these states. Okay? So, nice thing about this is there's one less variable to worry about. Okay? We're not going to have to worry about gravitational potential energy because this object, this mass on the spring, is not moving up and down. So we just have to worry about, um, we don't have to worry about that. Okay? And instead of worrying about the y position, we are now worried about the X position. That's what's in line. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the X position of each object. We're going to be talking about the speed. We're going to be talking about the acceleration, the kinetic energy, the elastic potential energy, and the restoring force for each of these. Actually, you know what? I'm going to fill these in right now so that we can run down them as quick as possible and move on to talking about other stuff. Position. Very straightforward for this. Okay. 
this is equilibrium. Sorry, I didn't write that. B is dead is where the spring is in equilibrium. So what's happened is the spring has been compressed. Someone has pushed this block back. Now they're letting it go. This is the point it gets let go. This is the point it passes through equilibrium. This is the maximum distance, uh, the, the farthest it, the string gets stretched instead of compressed. So if this is equilibrium, kind of would make sense to say that this is x equals 0. Well, this is where it gets released from. This has got to be where x is at a negative maximum. And if this is as far as it gets stretched out, this is where x is at a positive maximum. Kind of makes sense. A and C. This is the minimum length of the spring, if you will, the maximum compression. This is the maximum elongation. These are the turning points. Objects do not move when they're at their turning point. They're, that's the whole point, the definition of a turning point. The velocity is zero there because it's in the process of turning around. Velocity is zero at A and at C. And for object B, or point, uh, or time B, the velocity, in this case, if we're moving from A to B to C, the velocity is at a positive maximum. I suppose if we were going the other way from C to B to A, we would say the velocity is negative and at a maximum. Okay, it's as big as it gets. In any case, when it passes through equilibrium, this is as fast as the velocity gets. Okay? That is the biggest it gets. Um, let's see here. The acceleration. Well, the whole definition of equilibrium means no net force. And if there is no net force at point B, that means there can be no acceleration. So let's go ahead and fill in. The net force is zero at this point, and the acceleration is also zero. Okay, it is not accelerating at these points for point B. At A, on the other hand, the object is about to start gaining speed in this direction. The force from the spring is about to put, is as big as it's going to get, and it's going to push the block in this direction. Therefore, the force is positive and at a maximum. The acceleration is also positive and maximum. As you probably guessed, for point C, it's reversed. Negative, maximum for both A and F. Okay. The force is at a maximum, a negative positive, just to know which direction it is in. The kinetic energy for each of these points. At A, the object is not moving, therefore kinetic energy is zero. At B, the object is moving as fast as possible. Kinetic energy is at a maximum. At point C, the kinetic energy is zero, again, because the object is not moving. The elastic potential energy, also very simple. Okay? Object is not stretched out at all, or the spring is not stretched out at all. No spring potential energy. At A and C, th these are maximum compression, maximum elongation. The elastic potential energy is at a maximum at both of these points. Okay. So you start to see some patterns here, and we'll talk about the patterns when we get to the back of the sheet. This is a very repetitious unit. Okay, a lot of the questions say exactly the same thing. If you can reason through why these variables are the way they are, okay, don't just memorize them. Think about why. Why would the acceleration be at a negative maximum here? Why would the velocity be zero here? Why would the elastic potential energy be at a maximum here? Then you will be fine. Then this actually becomes very, very easy. One of the only things we have not talked about yet is the period of a mass and spring system. So what sort of factors do you think could affect the period for this? And I've had people in the past tell me, okay, they said, well, I mean, there's only a few things that it could be. First of all, let's assume, well, this goes for anything, okay? We have a mass and spring. The two most obvious that it could be, well, how about, does the mass play a role? Does the mass play a role? Okay. There's a mass on a spring. If you put a bigger mass on here, does the period increase or decrease? What about the spring constant? Spring constant means how stretchy the spring is. Okay. How much force that spring exerts for every meter that it is pulled out. If you change the spring constant, would that change the period? 
how much time it takes the mass to go through one cycle. So does spring constant, or K, play a role? And I think there's one more really obvious one, which is, I guess, uh, the best way to call it is the initial displacement, X. Does moving this a certain distance, you know, do you, if you only displace it a little bit, is the period going to be the same as if you displace it a lot? Maybe that has an effect. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go to a simulation because this is kind of difficult to show. Okay, um, I don't have a great way to show this without damping in the real world. I don't have um, a frictionless surface to put a horizontal mass on. I could probably figure out a way to do it with like a track, one of the frictionless tracks over there, and the um, the carts that collide, but the easiest way to do this is to show you a simulation. So, I'm going to bring this up. Here's a simulation that I found online. Um, let's do the first one. Let's do mass first, okay? I have a timer down here that is ready to start when I hit the start button. Let me put it on slow motion so you guys can see it. I have two masses here. These are at the same level, okay? These springs are stretched out the same amount. They have the same spring constant. The only difference is the mass hanging on them, okay? One has a mass of 250 grams. The other one has a, a mass of 100 grams. When I start this, you will see that one of them makes it back to its original spot much quicker, okay? The 100 gram mass right there makes it back much, much quicker than the other one. So, looks like mass is affecting the period. I guess we could say that the smaller the mass, the smaller the period. Or, in other words, the bigger the mass, the bigger the period. Now, whether that's a proportional relationship, we're not going to get into you guys finding that out, but um, that, that, that's something that we'll talk about in just a little bit. But for right now, it's enough to know, hey, bigger mass, bigger period. Let me reset this. Okay. Let's make one of these spring constants really big. And let's, let's see, pause, slow motion, timer, natural length. So we made one spring constant really big. Let's put masses on the end, 100 on each to make them the same. Okay, now let's see what happens. Everything is the same, same mass. Uh, these, this is the natural length of each spring. The only difference is this is much higher spring content, uh, constant. Play. Okay. Bigger spring constant, 